everybody, welcome back to the amazing to Fallout 4, and in this video I want to kind of get you started on the road to learning more about chems and meds and first aid. So it's going to include a bit of a guide on some of the basic chems that you'll be using straight away, and then plenty of links in the description below this video to kind of further reading <laughs> about this amazing subject, because you'll know if you go into your pit boy and you go to the aid section, there's loads of different things that you can start picking up straight away. Um, and most of them have different effects um, and most of them as well have positive and negative effects as well so you might have some food which might make you a little bit more healthy but it adds some more radiation to you as well so anyway let's get started um, let's jump over we're gonna be looking really spending a lot of time on the fallout wiki um, and kind of I guess meds and chems kind of the kind of uh, consumables that you can use to affect your character kind of fall into three main categories. You've got chems, you've got food, um, and you've got drink. So these particular pages here from the wiki, I'll link them in the description below this video so you can have a look through them, and they go into an awful lot of detail about how these things affect your characters. But if we start off with chems, because these are the most common things that you'll use, um, the chems or the meds, there's, there's two rough sorts. You get ones that are addictive and ones that aren't addictive. Um, so what will happen is if you're using an addictive chem um, regularly, um, what will happen, say you're using a lot of psycho, your character will become ad addicted to psycho. Um, and if you haven't got psycho in your system, what will happen is you will then have negative effects. So your character probably won't be quite as intelligent and, and things like that. So then you've got to get rid of that addiction by visiting a doctor or having some uh, addictol, I think it's called. Or there's various food that you can eat as well to get rid of addictions that way. So it's all very interesting. So these um, these uh, systems kind of inter interweave and... Um, um, play with each other and play off each other as well. So let's start off with a really simple thing. So the stim pack. This is the basic med that you're going to find all over the wasteland or you're going to buy it um, from traders. Or you're going to find it on people you've killed. And this helps to restore some of your health over time. I mean, it does it pretty quick. And then depending on the uh, how you've leveled up your character the amount of health that the stim pack brings back can change so stim packs generally are safe to use no matter what um, because they, they have no negative side effects then you get medex so medex is actually morphine but they can't call it morphine because that's um, uh, not allowed in certain countries like Australia don't like it if you have a video game with morphine in they'll ban it but medex basically is a um, painkiller and this means that you'll, when you actually play with it um, in your system, you'll have a better damage resistance as well. So it's the sort of thing that you may well want to take before you go into a fight. Then you look at something like Radaway. So Radaway is what you take when your player um, gets radiation poisoning. So if we go back to the game actually for a second, you'll see, if you look at the bottom left hand corner on my HP, you've got all that green stuff and there's that little bit of red and that red is the radiation poison. So as I'm moving around the wasteland and maybe I'm going somewhere that's a bit more radiated or I eat plenty of food that's got radiation in it or I'm battling... Um, enemies that have got radiation or I go into a w water tends to have lots of radiation into it I need to get rid of that you take rad away and that will get rid of it and rad away again isn't addictive but if you want to take a med to take before you go into a dangerous situation say you're going somewhere that you know is contaminated with lots of radiation you would take rad x so rad x again prevents you from get well reduces the amount of radiation poisoning you will take as you go into a particular area so again so there's this whole idea of cures and prevention now mentats these are very cool you'll find these all sorts of all, um, all sorts of different versions of these as well but basically these help the stats of your player um, when it comes to doing things like influencing other players and and other things as well so there's diff lots of different types, but if we go down and we can scroll down again, I'll link to all of these throughout the um, throughout the uh, 
a video I'll link in the description below this video. So ordinary mentats Ment are most useful characters with low intelligence and perception as they grant a useful bonus for both of these special stats. The downside is that they are addictive. So free, and then we have great men mentats. Um, they will increase your charisma. So um, if you're about to have a conversation with someone and you want to influ influence them, you, you chew on some great mentats. If you want some berry mentats, um, these will increase intelligence and provide enemy highlighting. I think that means you could probably like crack um, higher safes maybe or terminals better. And you've got orange ones as well. Um, they only increase perception. So I guess that's maybe, maybe you could tell if people are lying or not or something like that. But anyway, again, these the Mentats is something you would take before you got into a situation. Again, they are addictive, so you, you might well need to get rid of that addiction at some point. Now, Psycho, um, you'll find quite a lot. And this is, again, something you would take before you went into combat, or if you got into combat and you were like into having a little bit of trouble, you would inject yourself with Psycho, which is a military drug. Um, and basically what this does is this gives you um, more damage and more health as well. Um, let's see if we can find out the bit where it is. Duh, duh, duh. Psycho's primary effect is to increase damage resistance and the dampening of higher brain functions intended to, intended to create tough shock troops for human wave assault. And it makes the soldiers hard to control. So again, so you're going to have more damage resistance. I think you get better damage output as well with Psycho. Then you get Jet. Now Jet is really addictive um, and Jet slows down time. It doesn't last for very long, so you would use this actually when you're in combat. You'd give yourself a huff of jet. Time would slow down, and if you combine that with um, something like Psycho, that would, they will kind of work together to, to help you do that. Again, jet is very, very addictive, so make sure that maybe you're, you're considering having some Addictol um, to get rid of it, or be be ready to take a trip to a doctor's you know, pretty soon after in order to make sure that you can get rid of that addiction. Then you have buff out. Now buff out is a general purpose drug. Again, it's addictive that gives your character more strength. Um, uh, increases strength reflexes and raises the maximum health. Um, so again, this is something you would take. In generally, as you're going along, you're thinking you're getting into a different, difficult situation, you would take some buff out. Now, after you've been taking all these drugs, <laughs> you become addicted, you can buy um, addictol or you can make addictol and the idea of this is that this will get rid of your addiction so you don't have those negative side effects of having withdrawal it's quite expensive to buy um, and there are certain meals you can make you can craft that have the same effect but you know if you've got one ready to go if you've been in a, a particular series of hard combat encounters or you've been using lots of buff out and jet and psycho then a quick huff of addictol should hopefully get rid of it as well now, going on to sort of curing um, health and improving your health, um, regaining health, purified water is a very good one. You can have dirty water as well, but purified water will make you more healthy without giving you um, any radiation damage. And things like Nuka-Cola as well. Although I think you do get rads off Nuka-Cola. You do gain a cap, so you get a little bit of money. is worth looking at. And the Nuka-Cola variants as well. So you've got Nuka-Cola Quantum. Um, the stories behind these are really funny as well. Again, this will help to um, heal you more, but this one gives you quite a lot of rads because I think it's got strontium-90 in it or something <laughs> to give it that glowing blue colour. Um, and although we've really talked about sort of pre-made meds and pre-made first aid, co the cooking station in Fallout 4 is amazing as well because you can craft different foods. So as you're going around and you're killing animals, um, by all means, take the meat with you and take the bits with you, the, the teeth and all that sort of stuff. And then when you sit down at the cooking station, you can craft things. Now, depending on which um, ingredients and uh, which recipes you've found and which level your character is, there's different things you'll be able to make. But quite, of the, quite a lot of the things you can make right at the beginning of the game um, replicate the things that the drugs do as well. So sit down. Go through, uh, go onto the cooking station, and it will tell you what you can make. It kind of highlights the stuff that you can actually make at the same time, and look at the buffs, 
and the negative things that particular meals will give you. Some food, you think that food would just heal you, but lots of it doesn't. Lots of it gives you special status effects as well, in the same way that Mentats do and things like that. So have a good look at the cooking station. Um, like, for example, you can make like iguana on a stick, which, you know, resource, um, which gets your health back. And then you've also got the chemistry station where you can make meds. So this is important. You can combine existing drugs you found to make even more different drugs. Um, and what I'll do as well is I will link to this article as well, which gives you the 10 most useful chems to use or craft or find in Fallout 4 as well. So there we go. Hopefully that's given you a good idea <laughs> of where to start. Stim packs are kind of your general purpose thing you're going to be using a lot. Um, Rad away you're going to be going to be using to get rid of radiation poisoning. Rad X you're going to be using to um, take before you go into radiation so areas, and then Earl obviously Sterling. there's all the other stuff you as well. Remember, you can look at your pit boy, and you can go in and you can expect inspect stuff, and often it will give you an idea. So there we go. So jet, it says slows time for ten seconds. Doesn't, however, tell you how, that it's an addictive thing. Um, irradiated blood. So that again, that's going to tell us. Um, we're just going to increase our um, hit points by 50, um, but it's going to give us 20 extra rads, so we've got to be careful about that. Uh, iguana on a stick, there we go. Health, I think it's, sorry, it's health points, isn't it? So it's going to give us 40, um, but we're not going to get any um, extra radiation what? for that. So that is the long journey. Now, you don't need to know all this stuff, you know, as long as you're using like stim packs. I'm going to be like <laughs> and uh, right away that gets you through most of the game anyway but if you want to really delve into the crafting um, and the kind of the mechanic the in-game mechanics of uh, chems and meds and drugs and all that sort of stuff then uh, maybe this has been a useful video if it has hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and i will of course see you again soon